silence to know whether the Lord had made his journey successful or not. See, we don't get you to do it. We say, oh, she's fine. She was like Beyonce. That's it. Come on, girl. You mind? We going. That's it. We get it. You better stop and gaze. Stop and look. See, because when you do that, Kevin, you will see something that you would have never seen if you was bedazzled by what she got on, how she talked. I was at the jazz concert yesterday down on Central Avenue, and um, a lady who was also a widower, very nice looking lady, lives two blocks from here. Uh, I'm walking, and she called me by a name. I stopped and I said, oh Lord, who knows me? <laughs> and I turned around and she says, hello John. I said, oh, hi. And she said, are you still there? I said, yes. I thought that you moved. I said, nah, wasn't the right time. Wasn't God's time. And so I'm, I couldn't help to look at the people looking at me because they saw the way she was gazing at me. Mm -hmm. And I said, wait a minute. So I gazed back at her. And so she said, well, you can come by sometime since you're still there. OK. I work with her husband at the police building. He died about 40 years ago. If I go by and see her, I'm going to be doing this. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is so, so beautiful. Now, look at verse 22. And when it came about, and when the camels had finished drinking, that took a while. That took a long while. That the man took a gold ring weighing a half a shekel. It was a nose ring. It wasn't like a ring because that wasn't a wedding engagement ring. That's a European thing. It was a gold ring that the women wore in the left nostril in that culture. He took this gold ring and two bracelets for her wrist weighing 10 shekels of gold. And he said, whose daughter are you? See, he knew she was the one. And what was he doing, ladies and gentlemen? He went through protocol. Like if you, me little boy that you want to marry, you're going to have to know. This ain't 10, 20 years down the line. Not now. You're going to have to take that boy to your daddy. You're going to have to take him right in. That boy said, girl, you so pretty I want to marry. You're going to have to say, come on, I want you to meet somebody. Not mama. She's next, but daddy first. And then if the boy never comes back to the house again, you got a blessed daddy. That's the way it's supposed to be. Because daddy was find out, to, to find out something about it. It was in this room that my son-in-law came to me. My desk was over there by the window. And he came in and he sat down and he just started crying. I, I was working at my desk. And he's beating on the desk. What must I do? What must I do? I just said one thing. Diamonds are girls' best friends. And we're on back to my computer. Me and Lucy had already approved of the boy because he's one of the finest, decent persons that I ever met in my life. And I'd be a fool to try to mess that up. But I had to tell him, you need to, just like this man brought her, a gold ring for her nose. And he brought all that when he left Abraham's house. And he said, now when you see her, that's what you do. And beware of a man that's asking a woman for the gifts. Uh-oh. No. That's right. If a man is asking a woman for the gifts, ladies, that lets you know right up front, that's not the man for you. No. He needs to give you some gold. Oh, this is beautiful, beautiful. Now, little things are often a distinct mark of character. And the little things for feeding the camel and giving that cup of water was enough to convince him of who she was. Her response was prompt and cordial. She forsook her task at hand and helped assisted another person with eagerness. Eagerness. I know it's easy for you to brush this off. Oh, John, you're just trying to make that male-female thing again. No, I'm not. That's what a guy looks for when he looks for the proper woman. Uh, also, I have the uh, New Testament scripture in Titus chapter 2, <laughs> verses 1 through 4, because older women should teach younger women about these things.
mercy. Amen. That's the way that works. The older women should say, girl, if you want to win that man's heart, you better learn how to come here in this kitchen. Sit down. We're going to mix up some food and we ooh, And then when he comes by, you ain't got no business looking at him like that. Just, just, just put the food out. Tamales or whatever it is you eat, you know, put it out there, man, and let him smell that. And, ooh, and he say, hey, girl, what's, what's going on? You know, and watch him eat. There it is. But now, you know what? When you can't cook and you're always looking at McDonald's, you're killing his stomach and you kill him to what? All right, let me leave that one alone. Let me leave that one alone. Remember, guys, you need a job. Here it is. She forsook the task. She met the needs of this man without hesitating, and then she met the needs of the camels also. That's the kind of woman you want, guys. That's the kind of woman you want. She met the needs of the man and the needs of his friend. Man, when my wife was alive, you guys know when you came over here, Lucy was in, Lucy would, wait, I had the boys to men class out here in the garage, Saturday mornings at 6.30. I had 12 young men, 18 to 23, in this classroom. Lucy come out, because she had a stroke, limping, and Leslie helping her with the other tray. Limping with a tray full of biscuits, bacon and eggs, coffee, jelly, syrup, everything. The young men would eat around that table. One of them started crying. I said, why is she doing that? I said, she's the godly wife, man. And that kid told me, my mama don't even cook for me like this. There it is. And it's biblical. That is, that is what the biblical character is. She trusted God. And, oh, I have one more note. After a full explanation, look at verse 58. Verse 58. And they called Rebecca and said to her, Will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. Now, I want to share something with you because I skipped a lot of verses, but I want to show you the human part of this book. Because what Eliezer does is he says, who's your daddy? Where is he? And he goes to meet the daddy. Let's go on back and read those verses. And then we'll see what happens. All right, verse 32. So the man entered the house of Laban, and Laban unloaded the camels, and the straw and the feet of the camels in the water to wash his feet, and the feet of the men who were with him, because he had his crew with him. You know, they didn't travel alone. And when food was set before him to eat, he said, I will not eat until I have told my business. See, he's talking to Rebecca's family. And he said, speak on. Laban told him, go ahead and speak. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. And the Lord has greatly blessed my master so that he has become rich. And he has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, servants and maids and camels and donkeys. Now Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master in her old age, and he has given him all that he has, all right? And my master made me swear, saying, you shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whom, uh, uh, in whose land I live. And you shall go to my father's house and to my relatives, and you shall take a wife for your son. And I said to my master, suppose a woman does not follow me. And he said to me, the Lord before whom I have walked will send his angel with you to make your journey successful. Now you see why he was successful? Because the angel of the Lord was with him. Now do you see how you're going to be successful?